This is the story of Ernest P. Duplin, who invented the strangest television set in the world. On this set, he could look through endless space, 600 million miles away, to the far-off planet Jupiter. In a Jupiterian television station, he found three friends. Johnny Jupiter, a human, more or less. Major Domo, chief of the robots, and Reject, the factory rejected robot, who was able to appear and disappear at will. Soon, Duckweather found that he could turn to the Jupiterians for help whenever he was in trouble. But alas, no one believed the young inventor. Not even when his friends from outer space sent Reject the robot to the planet Earth. against a spar with your hair waving in the wind, and me up on the poop deck with the rudder and the wheel in my hand with a big white cap on it, go right across the top, yelling orders to the crew, avast you swabs, lower the jib boom, unfurl the mizzen sloop. Ooh, boy. Oh, would it be very nice, Ernest. Only it'll never happen. Not as long as you're working as a store clerk for $15 a week. Yeah. I guess I was just daydreaming. But you know, you really could be successful if you wanted to, do you? Well, sure. I mean, enough to really work at it. Well, I do work, Captain. Let me show you my latest invention. No, Ernest, not an invention. They're fine and all that, but well, they're just not practical. So if you really want to be a success, you should go into business. Duckweather in business? <laughs> oh, hi, Mr. Frisbee. Well, don't you agree, Daddy? He could start a little business of his own on the side. In my spare time, sort of. That's right. Oh, pop and copy pop. The whole thing's a lot of nonsense. Why? Why is it nonsense? Well, that's the way you started out, isn't it? Yeah, but I'm not duck with her. Unfortunately, some people are cut out for a business career. Others aren't. Now, duck with her? Well, duck with her isn't. It's as simple as that. He's right, Captain. Oh, Ernest. The quickest way for Duckweather to become a complete failure is for him to start a little business of his own on the side. <laughs> yeah, he's right, Kat. Will you stop saying that, Ernest? Well, you don't care anything at all about making me happy. Well, sure I do. Well, then why don't you try to do something about it instead of agreeing with everything Daddy says like a, a sheep? But, Kat, well, you better try, Ernest. You better try pretty darn quick, too. <laughs> Work to be done. Come on, let's get at it. Yes, sir. Come on in, planet Jupiter. Come on in, Johnny. You need me, Johnny? Come on down there, it's on planet Jupiter. Johnny? Johnny, where, where are you? Oh. Oh, yeah. I came as fast as I could, Mr. Deckweather. We were having a holiday feast in the dining hall when I heard your signal. Well, Josh, I hope I didn't interrupt your dinner. Good heavens, no. I brought my dinner with me. I just love to eat while I watch television. That's a holiday feast? Of course. A whole bottle full of food tablets. Instead of his usual one a week. Hi, Major Domo. Good to see you. Can't stay very long. Got to get back to the dining hall. Major Domo was our head waiter. A typical robot's job. How many in your party step this way? Care to order now? The tips are terrible. <laughs> well, what's on your mind, Mr. Duckweather? Oh, uh, well, Captain wants me to start a small business, Johnny, and well, the trouble is, is I don't know what kind of a small business to start. Well, what do you do best? 
Well, that's just the trouble. I don't do anything, Bess. I'm, well, I'm just a jack of all trades. Don't belittle yourself, Mr. Duckweather. After all, you did build the only television set that can tune in another planet. Yeah, but building television sets is no small business, Johnny. Well, why not repair television sets? Hey. You can do it in your own time. Yeah, and right back here in this room. And Catherine will be very happy. Hey, Johnny, that's a wonderful idea. Only... Only what, Mr. Duckweather? Well, I don't think I know enough to repair television sets, Johnny. Not really. <laughs> don't worry about that. The Reject Robot is a whiz at fixing television sets. Reject? The best on Jupiter. Whenever you're ready, we'll send Reject down to hell. Okay, Johnny, that's a deal. <laughs> Major Delmo, we've done it. We've put Mr. Duckwater in business for himself. <laughs> Well, how's the ad look, Catherine? Oh, just wonderful, Ernest. Your name looks so distinguished in print. Yeah, Duckweather's TV Repairs. What? That does sound ambitious. Well, what's wrong with sounding ambitious? Well, I don't know, Catherine. Maybe your dad was right. Maybe, maybe I can't. Ernest P. Duckweather, don't ever say you can't. Is this Duckweather's television repair shop? Yes, sir. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Hampshire. Worthington Hampshire. Oh, Mr. Hampshire owns the newspaper that ran your ad, Ernest. Huh? Oh, well, if you came to collect for that ad, sir, I paid for that at the office. Oh, no, no. I'm here to see if you can repair my TV set, young man. You see, I have a lemon. Had it in every repair shop in town, and no one's been able to fix it. Uh, How would you like to tackle it? Well, sir, if uh, nobody else could, I doubt if we could. Oh, Ernest would love to do his best to try to fix your set, Mr. Hampshire. You see, this is very important to me. Tonight's the big fight, you know. Oh, yeah, with Killer McDougal and Rocky the Rock at nine. Are you a fight fan, Mr. Hampshire? Am I a fight fan? Am I a... Uh, just watch this. Up with your dukes. Watch your guard, boy. Now, circle right to counter punch my left jab. Now, watch that footwork. Now, watch this combination. Watch your footwork. <laughs> yeah, I am a bit of a fight fan, young lady. They're jumping Jupiter. So now you see why it's so important. I must see this fight tonight. Well, Ernest will do his best to have your set fixed on time, Mr. Hampshire. If he does, if you do that, young man, I'll see you have a full page ad in my paper absolutely free. Oh, Ernest! And what's more, I personally will see that you have all the work you can take care of here. Now, what do you say? Is it a deal? Is it? Is it? Uh, I mean, yes. Uh, we'll try. Fires. Diagonal, screwdriver, Phillips head, that's the meter, and hammer, soldering iron. Johnny? Huh? Is Reject ready? He's just had his final instructions, Mr. Duckworthy. Don't send him here, Johnny. Direct to Mr. Hampshire's house? Direct. And the faster the better. Are you ready for your flight to Earth, Reject? Super jet power on. Space belt faster. Descend. I've never been so glad to see anybody in my entire life. What's wrong with this old set, anyway? He says you can't get a picture or a decent sound out of it or anything. Are you call me, young fellow? Uh, quick, reject, disappear. No, sir, I didn't call you. Funny, I uh, thought I heard you talking. Well, how are you coming? Oh, just fine, sir. I... Ah, stop. Oh, well, what's wrong? What? Uh, well, nothing, sir. It's just that with, with these television sets, you've got to work awful fast to keep from getting your signal. I mean, your wires mixed up. Oh, my boy, I'm sorry. What for? Well, it's obvious that I make you nervous. 
from now on, I promise to keep out of your way. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jake, what's the matter with you anyway? He almost saw those pies. Now what? Television sets big? Are you sure? Turn it around? Oh. <gasps> BJ, look at that picture! Listen to that sound! <gasps> Mr. Hampshire! Are you calling me up with Quick, the spirit jet. Yes, sir. <laughs> look! You, you did it! Me. My boy, you're a genius. Why, I let me tell you, the whole town will know about this, the whole blessed town. What's that, Mr. Hampshire? A genius, eh? Oh, well, I knew the boy had talent, of course. I, I always said so. <laughs> huh? Surefire success, eh? Busiest shop in Clayville before he's finished? Well, I'm glad to hear that, Mr. Hampshire. Coming from a man of your standing, that's uh, an interesting opinion. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Very interesting indeed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, duck weather, my boy. Oh, duck weather, my boy. Oh, duck weather, my boy. You look tired, my boy. Here, let me carry that. Here, sit down, my boy. Sit down. <laughs> You feel all right, Mr. Quincy? Feel all right? I never felt better in my life, Duckweather. You know, I've been thinking over this TV repair shop idea of yours. I think it's a splendid idea. But you say... It shows initiative, imagination, the kind of get-up-and-go I admire in a man. But you told Catherine and me... And I want to encourage it as much as I can. Well, thanks. So, you see, to make it a complete success, I am willing to place at your disposal all of my business know-how. Now, naturally, I didn't come by this decision lightly, my boy. So, if you want to, I will become your partner. Gosh, Mr. Trippier, I don't know what to say. Well, don't say anything, my boy. Just sign this right here, right there. What's this? Oh, the usual partnership agreement. 51% to me as a senior member, 49% to you as junior. <laughs> and I want to say here and now that I'm proud to be associated with you in this venture. Gosh, just wait till Captain hears about this. Yeah, now I'll, uh, I'll see you later, eh? Partner? Partner? Gosh. Kevin, what a day this has been. I guess I'm just about the luckiest guy in this whole wide world. Ernest! Ernest, where are you? Come see what I've done. I've made up some slogans for you and I had some signs printed. Ernest, where are... Ribsy. Ernest P. Duckweather, who changed this sign? Hi, Captain. I thought I heard somebody um, out here. You changed it, huh? The repair sign. Oh, yeah. Well, why? Well, Captain, your dad had a talk with me, so now we're in partnership. Sure. But then it should read Duckweather and Brissy. Well, he explained that, too, and, well, seeing that he's seen your partner. Seen your partner? Yeah. It was controlling interest. Controlling interest? Plus 51% of the profit. 51% of the profit? Well, it doesn't sound so good when you say it. Ernest, don't you see what Daddy's done? He's tricked you. He has? And I think it was pretty dreadful of him, too. And I'm going to tell him so. No, no, wait, wait, Captain. Uh, I don't think your Daddy tricked me. Ernest, I'm going to tell you something, and it hurts me to say this. But I think it was pretty stupid of you to let Daddy get away with this. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I was pretty stupid, Johnny. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Duckweather. The business will be big enough for all of you. Yeah, well, who needed Mr. Frisbee anyway? Once word gets out about Mr. Hampshire's unusual TV set... Yeah, and I was doing okay without Mr. Frisbee, just rejecting me. 
next to your set is probably the most unusual in Clayville. Sure, and we did it without Mr. What do you mean, unusual? Didn't Reject tell you? Reject didn't tell me a thing. Is there something wrong with Mr. Hampshire's TV set? Oh, good heavens, no. Oh, thank good. Reject made a slight miscalculation, that's all. What kind of a miscalculation? After 9 o'clock tonight, Mr. Hampshire will only be able to get one program. But he only wants one to fight. Um, that's not the one, Mr. Duckweather. What is? A Jupiterian program called the Robot Club. It's Reject's favorite, you see. Oh, no! Really, Mr. Duckweather, our programs aren't that bad. But Mr. Hampshire wants to fight! Our programs are educational, instructive. Well, what time is it? Much better for him than what he wants to watch. Four minutes to nine! You should really let him... Hey, Reject! Now listen, you can move fast when you want to. You think you can get over it? Fix Mr. Hampshire set in four minutes? Jan? With my help? What's the matter if you reject? I'm not going to be able to get over Mr. Hampshire's house in four minutes. Reject could bring the set here if it's really important. Well, it's a matter of life and death in my TV repair shop. In that case, reject. Bring the set here at once. <laughs> Johnny, you'll just never make it. He'll never be able to fix that set in four minutes. Confidence, Mr. Duckweather. Though I still say, once Mr. Hampshire discovered a Jupiterian program, he'd never be the same again. Yeah, well, that's just what I'm afraid of. Well, here we are at the Farnsworth Arena, ladies and gentlemen. It's the third meeting between these boys and a real grudge fight. McDougal with a smashing record of 42 KO. Rocky, of course, undefeated. Now, in just a moment, Killer McDougal will be in the ring. And, uh-oh, here he comes now, folks. A camera's will... Now, oh, what in thunderation is that? The more I see of people, the less I get used to them. As I was saying before my wavelength was interrupted, will you let that dial alone? As I was saying, the weather forecast for Jupiter is... Let that dial alone, you... Get me Frisbee's general store. I don't know the number. Just get it. But they must answer. I want to talk to Duckweather. He works there. We'll ring it again. Oh, my set. What's happened to my set? Oh, somebody's going to pay dearly. After nine, reject. I guess the best thing we can do now is get the set fixed before the fight's over. Is Mr. Hampshire mad, reject? Well, didn't he see you take the set away? Gosh, I still don't understand how you did it. Got the time of meter? Fine, good. Now put it back. Put this back. Plug this in. Over there. You really think it's a work, Reject? Talk about a man. Mr. Hampshire. Hi, Mr. Hampshire. Uh, don't you hide me, young man. My set. Uh, yes, sir, but you see... Oh, I, what I, kind I, of a shop are you running here? Ruining set, stealing set. Oh, I wasn't stealing it, sir. Gosh, uh, I, I was only trying to fix it up right. Uh, don't you talk back to me, you young... Uh, you're a fraud. I, uh, I'll expose you for this. I'll run you out of time business. I'll, uh, uh, left, right. What a beautiful combination of fight. Eight, nine, ten. It's all over, folks. It's all over, I guess. What a fight. Folks who saw this will be talking about it for years. And thanks to our sponsor, you saw it all. Every exciting blow. <laughs> Duckweather, you've given me the most exasperating, infuriating, frustrating evening of my entire life. I'm going to pay you for your work, Duckweather. 
I'm going to pay you and pay you well. Well, 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 Mr. Hampshire. A Frisbee, we're busy. Yes, I can see that. Now, did I hear something about a payment? Uh, Mr. Frisbee. Daddy, tell I... Ernest you're sorry. You said you would. Later, my dear, later. Frisbee, I suggest you keep out of this. Keep out of it? Why, my dear Mr. Hampshire, anything that concerns this repair shop concerns me. After all, I'm the senior partner here. In other words, you are responsible for everything that goes on here? I am, sir. Now, about this payment. Thing. Daddy, you promised. Yes, my dear, and I will keep my promise. Just as soon as I collect what Duckworth has coming to him. That you will, Frisbee. Do you mind stepping outside? Outside? Yes, I don't like to settle matters of unfinished business in the presence of young ladies. Oh, I think yes. My philosophy of business, exactly, sir. Uh, happy, sir. Well, Mr. Frisbee, don't. Now, now, my boy, you'll thank me for this. Just wait and see. <laughs> oh, Mr. Frisbee. Oh, gosh, Mr. Frisbee. What a wonderful night to walk a girl like Catherine home. We were waiting for you. Uh, I was speaking to ice cream soda. Oh. Hey, you're closing the store. I am. But, oh my gosh, Mr. Frisbee, why? Well, it was Mr. Hampshire's idea. And when you've been in business as long as I've had, Duckweather, you'll accept the fact that the customer is always right. <laughs> Does the gentleman's television set work all right now? Oh, it works fine, Johnny, only... Only what, Mr. Duckwater? Well, see, Mr. Hampshire's afraid to use it. What's he afraid of? He's afraid of seeing you, Major Domo. Well... Oh. <laughs> Just think if he's seen both of us. Yeah, but I'm sure glad I do, Johnny. So are we, Mr. Duckweather. Good night. Night, Johnny. Channel out, Johnny. Channel K out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is the voice of the Mr. Rock.